So, so Christian went to Delaware. Where in Delaware did you go? Did you um, go to Wilmington? Yeah, we uh I was out there. Yeah, I was out there doing um Don't Tell Comedy, which was fun. Uh it was kind of like a, a pretty big deal, honestly. It was a uh, probably the biggest thing I've done so far doing stand up. It was really fun, nice. uh, to be honest. Wilmington, and then we did... I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> I never really learned. It's Rahatbath Beach, I think it's called. Rahatbath Beach. Rahatbath? Rahatbath? Yeah, it's just this... Is that uh, the area? It's just this kind of... Yeah, it's kind of this uh, beach town. Um, I I just got in today. I was there uh, Friday and Saturday. Yeah, I babysat his cats. Yeah, Brian cats it for me. Um. Oh, you did? I miss them dearly. Yeah, my cats oh. are genuine sweethearts. Uh, oh. They've never done anything wrong in their entire lives. They are sweet baby angels. <laughs> Lots of things being said right now. Did you not hear me? No, I hear everything. Okay. I'm just saying a lot of statements being made. About my sweet and... baby angels that have uh, that are perfect and have never done anything wrong in their lives? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, miss, I miss those cats. All right. Apple, strawberry, or banana? What? Apple. Are you strawberry, asking? Strawberry or banana? Are you asking which one we prefer? Strawberry. Yeah. Strawberry. You know, for some reason, I get like weird. Both I get strawberry. Brian get no. I Brian. Brian said. Brian said strawberry. Yeah, I'm, I I fuck with strawberry. Okay. What did you do? What did you say, Chris? Well, what I was uh, starting to say was that I get uh weird, like an irritation when I eat apples and strawberries for some Dude, reason. That's actually. Like- for me, wow. apples, they didn't always fuck me up, but now all of a sudden they do. I don't know what it is. I don't. Apple? I think it's like a light allergy of some sort, but they really like mess with me. Um, and I love both of those fruits, but banana is the only one that doesn't really do that to me among these three. So I guess I'm going to do What's banana. It's weird. I, I hate it. People be allergic to apples. Now, how does it fuck with you, Brian? It's like my mouth just feels... Oh, Josh is just. Well, I mean, that's I the per- a little insensitive of him. To yeah, ask that was crazy him. to ask and to leave. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't care. For Hello, that very much. Hello? Who's that? Did you quit? Did, Did you I qu- disappear? Yeah, you disappeared for sure. Yeah, that. You asked that a question and hung up on us, which was pretty rude. Not for nothing. Are you? Are you talking? Did Josh Cole? Yeah, that was Josh dinner? Cole. Josh Cole got off the call, and it was just me and he Brian Espinal. That's crazy. That's the same thing that happened last week. Oh, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, Brian was saying why. You, you were telling me what's wrong with apples. What does it do to your mouth? You said something about your mouth. and then Yeah, it just bothers my mouth after I eat it for <laughs> enough time. I don't know why. Yeah, same, same for me. Which sucks, because I like apples and strawberries. But I can't, I can't really... I can eat them, but I know that it would just be super irritating. I don't know what it is, really. If anybody is listening and knows what this phenomenon is, I I, I would like, I I guess it's like some kind of allergy. Are you soft if you have allergies? Does that make you like a bitch? (laughs) Yeah, uh, I'm I'm weak and I would not survive in life. I can eat apples, just not for a long time. Not for a lot of apples. Yeah. It's not sustainable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, according to a lot of rich comedians, if you are you have a peanut allergy, then you might as well not be alive. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing everything, including Brian's mouth. Whoa! <laughs> 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 Damn, Brian, he destroyed you. Yeah, no, I can't recover from you just got nuts, so over. that. Would be uh you just got pwned. Somebody's nuts. Yeah. Man, you guys are nuts. Oh, oh, oh. oh this is what you guys do. Yeah. Statements like that. Yeah. Let I feel like something ready. else important has happened in the time since we've had a podcast, which hasn't been that long. Um, we did no, we did a Wednesday. podcast last week. We did I, well, I could tell you more about oh, Delaware, I day. guess. That's this is like the shortest gap. Why would you want to break up? Say again, Josh. Uh, you're kind of like uh, phasing out a little bit. Oh, my! I, I got the Wu-Tang connection. Might be you. Oh, shit. 
Or um, it could be your no, headset. I don't know if you got to switch to your other headset or something. But No, I didn't. I didn't. Um, it's probably my Wu-Tang connection. But anyway. No, I mean, you're not cutting out or anything. You're just kind of garbled a little. Yeah, okay. that's the headset. Let me switch. Uh, you guys talk about some. Uh, all right. Well, Brian, Josh is going to get his headset. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess I got to talk more about. Oh, he's off for sure. Uh, well, there I'll wait go. for Josh to talk more about Delaware. Um, I guess we've uh, we've watched. Brian has watched all of One Piece. I'm I've only watched like the first two episodes in full. Uh, cause I was away and I haven't really had a t- chance to watch stuff. Um, so I, it, I've always been like, now I'm getting to a point where I'm like, is this strike breaking? If we talk about stuff like that? No, it should. Yeah. I don't it technically so. is in theory, like a, a lot of it's like promoting a thing in a sense, but. Or more like reviewers. I think, I don't think reviewers are breaking scab by talking about. Yeah. That. I don't want to, I don't know the. I, f- I guess there are defined rules of the scab stuff, and I, I guess I should probably have looked into it by now. I know manga doesn't really apply to them at all, but Idaho. Uh, we're talking about whether talking about like stuff like the Netflix One Piece and the Turtle stuff is probably strike is like crossing the picket line. Well, oh, we, we also that's have a, f- a good question. Yeah, because I've I haven't watched all of it yet. To be honest, I haven't watched all of the live action One Piece quite yet. Uh, wait, wait, wait! It's out already. Yeah, it's been yeah. out. It, it came out. Uh, and they the whole series. Yeah, like the whole yeah. season. Eight episodes. I, the, I watched the whole season already. I oh, oh, we gotta talk about it, even though I haven't seen it. Yeah, I think it's already crossed the picket line. So no, you could watch stuff. It. The you can watch things, but you I you can't talk about it in a promotional oh. sense, I guess. And so it's actually the opposite of what I would like to happen right now. Yeah. Yeah, because you I could see. watch it, and there's nothing wrong with that. But um, I think there's They're promoted in yeah, in a sense, like bringing it up and talking about it specifically, like the content is possibly like crossing the line. So I don't know if we should really like talk about it because I I, I want to talk about it. I don't think it's that. I don't think. Well, it's I would that. like to be part of the WGA one day, probably. So I don't yeah, know. we but yeah, we and, and I like, want to stand aside, Danny, and I don't want to be spoiled because I do not remember one piece from 15 years ago. Damn. It's not so, really. I don't think it's. It's probably yeah, 20 years about ago, it. Dude. I really. You're don't. a scab, Brian. It's okay. It's You're not. Learning. It really isn't. It's just talking about a TV show. It's not like we're hey, bro. Like, listen, go watch one piece now. And you love your master overlords. <laughs> and you're going to have boot for dinner and some laces for dessert. Um, let me see. Let me look up the lights, the, the rules. I mean, sorry. Um, <laughs> I said lights. I don't know I, why. I, I, sh- I should know this. I actually, one of the members in, 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 the nor- in the branch that I'm actually a part of is a SAG actor. Our um, man was talking about this stuff, but I didn't, I didn't bring up watching Netflix. According to SAG-AFTRA, uh, influencers and content creators should not post on any social media sites regarding a movie, television show, or performance that is on strike. This goes for both influencers and content creators, whether they are not, whether whether or not they're getting paid for the content they create. So I guess technically we can't talk about One Piece. We wouldn't be in solidarity if we did. Yeah, let's stop using. Let's stop saying it like that. Let's say we're not going to because we're going to stand in solidarity two versus one at the very least. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's it's pretty uh, loose and stringent, I, but hey, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I can I wait because I still haven't uh, seen all of it. There we go. That was that was the gist of it, anyway. I haven't seen all and of it then, anyway, so maybe I don't know. And we'll then see. Christian came in his pants when he seen the gum gum no rocket punch for the first time. He did. That's all you got. I can't say. I can't say he what he did it. in the in the thing. Yeah. Well. <laughs> I guess we could. Can we talk about what we saw in the trailer? <laughs> <laughs> Does that count? Sure. That's, adver- that's advertising it. That's though. true. That's true. I guess we should Look. stop talking about it all together. Yeah, I, th- I think we should just move on. Hey, I'd love to hear what everyone else's thoughts on this matter is and how strongly I feel about this so that I can give my responses to y'all. Not you two, Chris and Brian. I mean the audience. Does it grind y'all gears that we want to stand in solidarity with other working class people? Let us know. 
I don't think so. Well, if you support I it, think pretty much everybody's on the side the of the writers, to be honest. Oh, you'd be really surprised, Chris. How many of your actual co-workers, the people you work side by side every day, don't have that mindset? You know? You'd be really surprised. Yeah. Well, I don't care about the most people. I'm pretty I think like the majority of people are like very much on SAG AFTRA and, and, and the WGA side. That's what it looks like from social media anyway. And that's it in spite of I've not seen anybody who is like a good sign. I was not I was not I haven't seen anybody who's like fuck these people. You know what I mean? Like No, only like like people that don't really that really don't know what they're talking about. And I mean like I, I sincerely mean that because from from comment sections and stuff, whenever I see stuff brought up about it, there's nobody making huge essays in the comments about why they're being greedy, like, oh, that worker's are greedy or some other bullshit claims. You know what I'm saying? It's it's the opposite. And yeah. I'm I'm pleasantly surprised actually that there's a strong awareness yeah uh for labor rights well this is know? like such an egregious type of thing with like actors and stuff so i don't know with writers and whatnot especially writers and you know people that are not on camera like you know behind the scenes folks that yeah. it's crazy like the working conditions and all that stuff are so like absurdly wrong that you'd have to be some kind of an alien <laughs> to be like you've literally got to be a saiyan from like the old days when they were like beasts and mean people <laughs> the, to really yeah. be on the side of studios at this point. But yeah. Yeah. I, I hear you. I hear you. I just also think that, you know what I'm saying? Paying poverty wages is equally if, as if not worse, you know what I'm saying? You're more egregious. So that's why I say like, I, I view, Stuff that everyone seems so is so normal and okay about, like with minimum wage, not being survivable. You know what I'm saying? I mean, no, I agree. Something like that. Yeah. Like that's that's super duper egregious and affects everybody. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, almost everybody. Like way more, may way more people than than actors. So that's why I say like I'm I'm surprised and you know I'm glad that there is a heightened awareness, but it's not, you know, the awareness is still pretty low in general. Yeah. Uh, but I hope I hope through things like this, right? Because I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer or nothing like that. I just want to be specific. Like I hope through a movement like this that has so much support from people can just kind of open their mind to more ideas. Because it's it's it seems like people have to be have to work in like sub slavery conditions. You know what I'm saying? For someone no, for to sure. give a fuck. Yeah, no, I agree. So but, hopefully yeah. we could raise the bar a little bit. With with each and every you know a uh, uh, successful strike, yeah, I think like there's just been a wave of worker strikes and stuff coming out. Hell yeah, yo! Which is a good thing overall. It's a beautiful thing to be honest. Yeah, it fills me with pride and joy, bro. <laughs> you know, another topic that's kind of a little similar, but it's a very different crowd of people, right? So you hear about the situation going on with running backs? Yeah. In the NFL. You've 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 seen the, the narrative behind that, right? Yeah, the Jonathan Taylor so, thing. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But it's you know, obviously it's it's bigger than just him. Yeah, yeah. It's kinda yeah. about, you know, like so I guess I just have one of the our general thoughts on it. But before I ask your general thoughts, I'll just you know, for, for you guys and for the audience, just you know, the general idea is that oh you know, running backs aren't worth paying once they make it to the, like, once they make it out there of their rookie deal, which is very cheap compared to what, you know, top running backs have made in the past, that is not worth investing in them because they tend to get injured and their, you know, I guess their production tends to fall off after, you know, they get a big contract. Like, that's happened a lot in the NFL. So that's the gist of it. And, and, you know, the debate is around, you know, should running backs have more, uh, they like, they, they like to say respect, but I want to be more particular and say, should they have more financial protections? Should they have more like, uh, rights or something like that to guarantee them more money based on the production? Because running backs do have an important role in NFL offenses. 
as you know, as pass heavy as the league has become in the past like 20 years or so or whatever, right? Running backs, you know, you still need uh like backs. Yeah. Uh one way or another. So all right, that's just the gist of it. There's a lot there's a there's a few more things to it, but yeah. So yeah. Just, I think what running backs the ball rolling, Chris? Yeah, I think what running backs are going through is like kind of similar to what you know, people in the entertainment industry and like, you know, even actors and writers go through, you know, because there's always mm. cheaper, like if you don't work for what is available, then they'll just pick somebody else up because there's always going to be this resource, you know, there's always going to be running backs in the draft that could yeah. produce just as much or if not more than you just because of the fact that they're younger. It's a cruel fucking business, to be honest. And specifically, mm-hmm. what's been going on with Jonathan Taylor has been kind of uh, a bummer, to say the least. You know, just the, the I don't know if you heard like the whole trade thing with him, where they were like they allowed him to seek a trade, but like their price for him was a huge value, and it's almost petty to the point where like they wanted like multiple first rounders. You know, apparently I did from, not know the details of that actually. Yeah, they wanted like first round picks, and plus, like I think there was a story from I don't know how true this is. I just saw it on like a, just a picture somewhere. But they also like when they were talking to the Dolphins about it, they were talking about how they wanted like Waddle. Oh, that would have been so nice for the fucking Dolphins to have Taylor, man. Well, Waddle and and picks, they were they're asking for an obscene amount. No, I mean not for that. I'm just saying, like I'm just thinking. About like, have they been able to just give them, like, some few second rounders, maybe? A yeah, first? yeah. Anyway, anyway. But, you know, it's that yeah. thing where you, I think, like, there was a, a sports commentator who talked about how, like, Jonathan Taylor is like, hey, pay me what I'm worth. They say no. And it was like, okay, then uh, I want to trade. And then they try to trade him for what he's worth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, for uh, yeah. uh, where uh, it's just, like, kind of brutal. Um and at the end of the day, it's, it felt like kind of futile because like Saquon felt like he was at the like the front line of it, dealing with the Giants. And at the end of the day, he just kind of had to settle because no one like I feel like the league is just yeah, kind of unified. Uh, that was fucked up too, actually. Yeah, I think like the the league is just unified on that front that they're like, well, no, <laughs> uh, we we agree. Every every all thirty two teams seem to be in unison in the fact that like running backs are. A yeah. devalued position at this point, so it's kind of tough to negotiate from that level. Right, right, yeah. Um, that's definitely like the strategy that um, you know the the GMs and owners and such are are, are doling out. Yeah, um, and they can't and wait out. It's crazy. They're standing in solidarity. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, no, we're not going to. Be- <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's a bummer because like it's also like the um, it's not like the running backs can sit out because they don't get money. You know what I mean? Like they don't have the money to sit out already. Yeah. So. And also, there's the whole there is the the aspect of this that you know even more. No, I'm not gonna say even more so, but it's just there are there are more players. There are a lot of players, and that's that's probably one of the key points of the argument I left out, which it's it's important to understand it, which is that like the argument is that it's better to have two two running backs that could produce somewhat similar, you know, so like close enough to the value of um, of a highly paid running back and, and it'll still be cheaper. Or so they say, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, like running backs really don't have a lot of leverage um, by themselves, you know, and in my opinion, if, if, if they wanted something to happen, it's going to take all the players in the league from all different positions to kind of, you know, stand up with them. Cause it's hard, you know, it, I, an argument I've seen is that like, you know, the other players in the league aren't going to want to stand aside that they were running backs because it only benefits running backs. Right. Which mm-hmm. makes sense on paper. or will make sense in a vacuum like that, I think. But I think the real, the, the key thing here. Right, is that they will realize that if the running backs are banning to, are trying to get everyone together to to you know to fight for something more, we can all do the same thing mm-hmm. from all the other positions. You know, I'm talking about special teams, 
fucking punters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking like down to the coaching staff. Who know? You know what I mean? Like that. It, it, it's infectious. No, it's that, true. That line of thinking. Because the same re- the same things that'll cause people to not to be like, oh, like kind of think for themselves. Like, oh well, shit. What the fuck do I get out of it? Well, there it is, an opportunity for everyone to make a lot more money mm-hmm. because there is there is money there. There is lots of money out there to be given to the players. You know what I'm saying? And and that's kind of like my this is like my biggest point is that, you know, when you look at these players making millions and millions of dollars, you have to understand how much the owners are making to be no, paying I mean, all of these people millions, right? These guys are now, already thought... billionaires, all every owner. Because <laughs> the teams are just like one of their ventures. You know what I mean? Right. Like they have stakes in other things. So like they're right. in the billions. These are the richest people in the world. And yeah, then. some of. Some of. They're in they're a part of that one percent. Well do you know, have no doubt. So, you know, people people don't understand that a billion dollars is a million millions. Yep. You couldn't even count that many. If you counted a dollar a fucking day, you wouldn't even be able to live to count that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 a it's obscene amounts of money, and you know, sure, that profit isn't all just going into their pocket. They into their pocket. They want to invest in other things. But my thing is, so fucking what? Yeah, I can figure out what the fuck y'all do. With your profits after you pay the people what they fucking deserve. Mm-hmm. That's, that's my perspective in general. In general. And I don't really apply that to just like, you know, corporate entities and CEOs. I'm talking about even small business owners. If you can't pay your employees a, a livable wage, then fuck you. No, you don't deserve to have your business. You know, that's kind of my general mindset. I know that you, Yasu may not feel as hard on that line. As I do, you know what I'm saying? But so when I look at the football players, it's like, yo, we're not talking about a small business owner. We're not talking about <laughs> the, the the fucking owner of a, lac- of a professional lacrosse team that y'all niggas never heard of. You know what I mean? We're talking about the ri- like, what did you say, Chris? The richest people in this fucking world. Yep. So I look at a nigga like Jonathan Taylor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's not greedy. No. No. Especially since, like, running back careers are so short. So, like, you only got to pay them for a little bit. (laughs) You know what I mean? Especially, like, running backs can be a person, like, a team's whole offense. Like, the Giants, the the Colts, uh, the Titans, their offenses are their running backs, basically. So, you know, it's one of these things. It's one of those, like... uh, Still run heavy offenses, yeah. Yeah, it's one of those, like, hypocrisies where, you know, it's about how much value you bring, how hard you work is what you're going to get out of it. And it's like, it's not really, it's not a meritocracy, really. You it's know? really not. So. And it's fucked up because they, 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 they put certain positions in like in a hierarchical order to divide players. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, somebody, somebody in the comments told me, in, the, in some YouTube comments that they thought quarterback was the hardest position to play in the world. If that wasn't one of the most white supremacist things I've ever heard in my <laughs> fucking life, guys, but uh, aside from the racial aspect of it, like, you know, people, people, you know, have these thoughts in their mind that roles are more important than others. And I, and I, I, I think that's flawed. You know, I don't, I think certain roles at certain points now, and I'm not just talking about football. I'm talking about in general, like with jobs. Like, you know, every, everyone plays a role and every 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 cog in the machine is necessary. You know what I'm saying? You got to fucking screw loose. Your shit going to fall apart in time. I don't got to give the analogy. See, yeah, 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 I get it. You know, so, you know, running backs matter because they're a position on the field that you fucking need. Same way punters matter. You know what I mean? And guess who else matters? The people that draw the fucking paint on the field before every game. Because if you ain't had that, everything will look crazy. You get what I'm saying? Yep. So, you know, I, I, I don't... 
I, I wish people had more of that mindset, you know, like, like, yo, like we need everyone. We can, you can say you like a position more than others, or you can say you respect the position more, but to justify, like, I don't know. I guess, the, I guess it's, it's, it's debatable. I'm not, it's debatable, Chris. Yeah, I guess Ryan. like sports. You can, you I think can pay people up more than others for certain roles. I, I just don't think that like it should be at the expense of someone else getting underpaid. Yeah, you know no, I agree saying? with that. I think like yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, there. I would, I would say that there are like positions that are more valuable than others in the context of the game, like how the game is set up. Yeah, yeah. But that doesn't mean like you underpay a, a subsection of things. Uh, like on any other position, but you know, it's like, it's, it's an interesting time because ever since like Mahomes signed his contract, there's been like a race between multiple positions to be the highest paid X. You know what I mean? Like was Mahomes the highest paid quarterback I for a time. He got like $500 million when he won the Super Bowl the first time. And you know, he, he structured it and took less money. And like, I think he shaved off a bunch of, money from that contract so he could like so they could like bring on more people which is such bullshit like he yo i all right my bad i know there is a cap and there's a cap for a reason but he how crazy does that sound? like me the 500 millionaire is 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 going to take a fucking uh uh uh, uh a check cut Meanwhile, this motherfucker making billions. Yeah. You know what I mean? He's not yeah, cutting it's, anything from it's stuff. So crazy. It is crazy. But, I mean, it. But in the grand scheme of the cap, I, I get it mathematically. I yeah. understand that there is a pot. You know, Tom Brady did that all the time, apparently. So it's just. Yeah, yeah. But ever since he's. Actually, caps are there so that teams can't just fucking throw unlimited money bags at. Yeah, no, that's again. true, too. It, it, it's, 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 so that the, it's so that all the teams have a fair shot at landing um, players. No, that's true, too, back Brian, in the day, it used sure. to be crazy. Why do you think the Lakers got all them championships in the Celtics? Yeah. They had the money. No, it's true. I mean, Why you know. Don't the Knicks have the championships? We had two. It's one of those things where, like, two things can be true. Where it is a useful mechanic in terms of the game where nobody can have a high advantage over other teams, but it is also like these, the cap doesn't affect the billionaires that own the teams at all. Like they're not participating in the cap cuts themselves. So I guess that's the more yeah. the point that we're making, but it is Brian, you're all right about that. But yeah, what I was saying was like, ever since like Mahomes did the, like got that contract, there's been like a race amongst quarterbacks to be the highest paid quarterback. Now Mahomes not, is not even the highest paid guy anymore. I think it's Justin Herbert right now. Uh, I, did he ha did he even go to the playoffs? No. <laughs> no, I don't think he's been there but once they, yet. But they want to talk all that shit about Dak anyway. Well, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, Dak got a Dak got like pretty much close to what he got. The thing is, is like when you become the highest paid person, somebody else is going to lobby for that and probably get it if they if you know, they prove themselves useful enough. So I don't think anybody is ever going to be like the highest paid anything for a set amount of time. Cause I think Joe Burrow yeah. is coming next and he's going to eclipse everyone because the Bengals uh, cannot, I would imagine. cannot lose this guy. <laughs> no, they can't. <laughs> Joe Feisty, I can't believe how I went from hater to that's my nigga. And it was before Ness. I swear to God, it was before I found out he was on the Nest main. That just solidified it. <laughs> I didn't want to like him, man. I didn't want to like him because, you know, he was white savior. He really was. You. The nigga second had, he got into the league. had that city on lock, bro. Bro. I couldn't believe it. Put a cigar in his mouth. Fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> that shit had me so tight. Yeah, dude, I felt. Because <laughs> I knew. I knew that nigga would never, you know, it could never be. They did the same thing with Trevor Lawrence. Just it wasn't as gaudy. Bro, um, they were glazing Burrow. And I like Burrow too. I think they he's a great player. Yo. They just Did you see when he when he when he had the cigar and came out on the field with his yeah. uniform? Dude, they got come a whole game. They got Michael Bay <laughs> to come in and direct that thing. <laughs> so that shit was crazy. Did it look awesome? Yeah. Was I mad oh, that it was yeah. Burrow? That nigga looked like yes. Jesus Christ, man. 
<laughs> Dude, Figuratively. I feel like the league saw Patrick Mahomes become the best quarterback ever and then saw Joe Burrow. It's like, please save us. Tom Brady and Big Ben about to be out of here. Please, they're old. They're going to they're go soon. Please. Yeah. It hurt out of Oregon, so nobody trusts that. Nobody trusts a quarterback from Oregon, man. You never know what them niggas. <laughs> is Joe Burrow actually that good? He is. He's actually yeah, very, very yeah, good. He is. He is. A lot of people, like, it's pretty much a consensus that, like, he's right behind Mahomes as the best in the league. Like, his second yeah. best. And, and, and let's be clear, Mahomes is for sure better than him. Yes. Like, as a passer, as a thinker. Mahomes, like, a, Mahomes, you know thing, Mahomes does things that if right Mahomes does things that if I saw it in Madden, I would throw my control. Yeah. So like, I don't think he's ever getting over him. But if Patrick Mahomes wasn't alive, he'd be that guy. But at the same Dak time, Dak wishes he was Joe Burrow. That's hmm? kind of Joe Dak? Burrow is better Dak. Yeah, Dak, he is better. I'll say it. I'll say it. Damn. He's better you Dak. Ever, that must have hurt. Wonder- <laughs> How it feels. It's fact. To like, it's all right. You ever wonder how it feels like to be clearly number two? Like to always like you know how LeBron might feel. Yeah. He well, he seems like Why would LeBron feel that way? Like, cause like he's trying to he's trying to pass Jordan, but <laughs> Yeah, I'm I guess I'm talking about like in current times. I don't know how like Burrow and Mahomes stack up all time, but they probably are like better than all of these older dudes for sure, like or better than they have ever been. Like, would would you guys be okay? Like, you're so fucking good. You're like miles ahead of number three, but for some reason you just can't be number one. Well, Burrow seems to be okay with it. Like when they asked him who the best quarterback in the league is, he very easily said it was Mahomes. Yeah, I guess yeah, what do you mean, Mahomes? What do you mean by yeah, you not guys? A like, how would you guys feel if you can't, if you couldn't be number one? Hey, like, I mean, you know, if you're a competitor, good. you know, it's like I get the it idea hurts. of what you're trying to like. I, w- I guess I would always feel like kind of like fuck, you know. But <laughs> at the same time, Joe Burrow is also knowing that like in a year or so, he's probably going to be the richest man in football. So. Uh, yeah, there's that. I wouldn't and feel super bad. Careers. Joe Burrow can still get more rings than Mahomes. Yeah, that's. I, I think they're gonna get like multiple rings between the two of them, and they're gonna both be Hall of Famers one day. And yeah, I, Dak's I, gonna get his rings against Burrow and Mahomes too. Well, but they're gonna get them off of him. It's gonna be Cowboys, Cincinnati, and Chiefs in the Super Bowl. That's for the crazy next few of years. you to say <laughs> that you're just shoving the Cowboys up there. What can I say? I mean, they got Dak. Good as if Dak hasn't gotten there. We got there. Dak and we have a good defense. Yeah, as if Dak hasn't gotten close several times, but then trembled. Trembled? He fell. You know, it's not guaranteed that we have to play, play the 49ers every year. It might be. In the playoffs. It very it's well not guaranteed. Be. It's not guaranteed. Not guaranteed. Right, now he doesn't have to deal with Garoppolo. And then Garoppolo you know, didn't beat him. <laughs> yeah, that nigga's not a problem. It's the fucking Bro, defense. It's Dak, Wagner. Dak got that, beat uh, by Mr. Fucking Irrelevant. Linebacker. <laughs> nah, it's all right. You guys don't got to deal with uh with Garop the Garop anymore. He's still on that. Oh, he's not. No, he's, he's in not Las Vegas team. now. He's in. He's on the Raiders. LOL. Which is very funny. They're not gonna. Watch. He's That's not gonna do mad well. funny. He's gonna get slaughtered yeah. in that. Yeah. In that division. Yeah. I'll say it. I'll stand on that too. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I'm gonna tell you this: if they good, it ain't gonna be because of him. Yeah, it'll be. So, right, so let me ask you: would it, would I, is the right way to say it? Would they be good in spite of him or despite him? What's the right way to? What's the difference between despite and? In well, spite? I don't think he's bad. I think he's just like kind of a guy who can get you places. You know, he's not a bad he's sure. player. He's the goat. Well, but it's crazy. But still, to say I would that. like to know what's the correct. Uh... I think in spite, despite of it. Despite him? Because in spite of him means that he's actively, like, sabotaging you. But I would say, well, maybe they are just the same thing, just different ways of saying the word. Jimmy's one ring away from being better than Tom Brady. That's not true. Who? <laughs> That's absolutely, he doesn't have a single ring. Well, he only, he does. That's true. He does have one, but he was a backup, so he didn't play at all. Look, mm-hmm. Jimmy like Garoppolo may not be one ring he? away he may not be one ring away from Tom from being better than Tom, but he is one ring away from Brian 
going to the top of the Empire State Building and screaming, Rah! <laughs> yeah, Brian. And Brian, if Jimmy Garoppolo ever wins a Super Bowl himself, you have to go to the top of the Empire State Building and, and shout "Garop, Garop, Garoppolo, Garoppolo." Yeah, you so, gotta say it like a Pokebar. Yeah, you gotta yell it as hard as you can. The heavens need to hear you say that. Like you used to say it, you know. Come on, Garoppolo. I remember hearing you say it. Garoppolo. Nah, you used to say it the other way. What do you mean? Something like that. I forget. I guess I forget too, so it's not as good anymore. Oh well. Grapple. Uh in Delaware I had one of the best ice creams I've ever had, man. They got good ice cream. Ice cream state. That was weird for me to find. I don't know if they're known for their ice cream, but they have really good ice cream down there. We went to uh, straight from the cow's udder. It's true. They uh they they make Is that so? Yeah, it was a farm that, you know, serves ice cream, and they, they do all the things on site, and it was pretty great. Yeah, it's pretty sick. It was also a donut spot, but we didn't get also, to go Oh, there. what kind of ice cream did you get? I got cookies Vanilla? and cream. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed it. Oh, cookies and cream is so fucking sick. You know, I'm, like, such a city guy. I'm, like... When we were City driving, bar. yeah, when I was driving through there and we saw like so many trees and so many beautiful like farmlands and landscapes, I was like, whoa, you know, <laughs> I was just blown away. Like, oh, green. It's pretty crazy. So much nature. I went on. Um, Isn't it like that update too, though? Yeah, but I don't make it out of there. I don't make it out there so much. Um, uh, yeah, we we went to a beach town. It was pretty cool. We walked the promenade and shit. I bought a, I bought an I, I performed and I bought and performed in a, an I Love Dilfs t-shirt. Uh, nice. Because the producers like said you should do this, and I was like, I thought this was funny, so I did that. It was pretty good. It is. It's it's ironic, funny, right? Yeah, you should funny. do this. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, they made it for me fresh. They like had a press in the back, and they made that shirt. It was pretty sick. Damn. <laughs> that is pretty sick, actually. <laughs> They yeah. really wanted you in that shirt. It was good. It's a good shirt, honestly. We're caught up on questions, right? Yeah, we're caught up. We don't have any more this week. But uh, I have a question. What's your question, Brian? <laughs> How'd you guys get so cute? <laughs> oh, uh, I don't know about oh, that one, bro. I'm impatient. I don't I'm know if I'm, I don't know if I'll ever get to Kawaii. You know, that's cute in Japanese. Um, are you guys Kawaii? Not no. quite. Mm. We'll get there. Not co white. Not exactly. <laughs> Not co white. Yeah, yeah. That's gonna be that. the title for this episode. I knew you'd appreciate that one. I yeah. really, I love it. Not... However you want to spell that, it's up to you. I, I know how to spell it. Kawaii. <laughs> I got it. I have it. Sick. All right, I'm a huge fan of that. All right, we're about to hit 40 minutes. Uh, are there any more ish- stuff we want to talk about? We don't have questions. Send us no. your questions, and we'll answer them here at newjumpcitypod at gmail.com. Or comment. I don't know, man. Um, but... Oh, oh, um, American comics. Oh, yeah. Uh, I've not caught up. So, 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 some things, some things. There's some happening. stuff I'm hearing about that I don't really like from American comics. And I'm just What's like, that? I heard that like Peter's like kind of becoming Green Goblin now. He's got like the Goblin serum in him. Like he's he's <laughs> taking a hard like left turn and is like on his way to being just kind of like the book is apparently so fucking unpleasant. It's just not fun to read at all. Wait, what's the point of him having the Goblin serum? I don't know. They're just dipping him into like the worst case scenario. Like they're really ruining Peter's life. And it's not fun to read. Like, he seems miserable and, you know, his, in his book. I don't know. I've only seen, like, minor details here and there. Apparently, he got, like, Kamala Khan killed. And then she resurrected yeah. as a mutant. Yeah, yeah. That happened at the Hellfire Gala. Yeah. The Hellfire, everything that's been going on with the X-Men that I've heard so far has sounded still kind of interesting, which is nice. It, it is. It is. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to, like, you know, get track of everything. Um, but it's 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 it seemed pretty interesting. 
you know, um, something really interesting that's going on in the Batman comics right now is that, like, you know, apparently, like, Selena Kyle, Cat, you know, Catwoman, she's, um, she's, like, training, and she's trying to, train, like, reform and train all of, like, the henchmen-level criminals in Gotham. Oh, that's sick. To, like, not, you know, die, like, you know, to, to, to not work for, like, these you know, criminals, you know, like for like the, the crazy super villains, you know what I'm saying? That's for them a cool to kind idea. Of do their own thing. I actually and like, like And like, I guess what's controversial is that like she has a rule, right? And of course, you know, Batman has a huge problem with this. And her rule is that, you know, you can't rob from like working class people, like, you know, like poor and middle class people, but rich people are open season. <laughs> Batman's like, chill, so, chill, chill. I'm rich, please. Huh? Batman's like, chill, 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 please. Don't rob my house. <laughs> one of the um, one of the most effective comments I seen, not that I agreed with it, or but I thought it was pretty potent, was that you know, what a like I think one of the lines in the comic was that you know, if a if a rich person wakes up to see the jewels missing, you know, how big of a deal is that compared to like you know some some you know people's houses getting blown up or something like that you know what i mean or yeah. stealing from the groceries of a mother who was about to feed her kids for the weekend you know et cetera, et cetera. right and somebody was like well, you know like what if instead of it was jewels it was the pearls that belong to the waynes you know what i'm saying like yeah, if somebody like, uh, stole Bruce's those mom. pearls that that's like a well, that's what he said. Like, if they had stole those from, like, from from Bruce, you know what I'm saying? Out his mansion, like those. That's not just jewelry. You know what I'm saying? Those pearls mean something. And you know, I, I understand that. And I guess it's silly to think that, like, oh, stealing stuff from people is just a okay. You know what I mean? That's anybody's possession means something to them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's theirs. If I have a special fucking lighter. Or special TV, you know what I mean. No matter the cost, it's mine, and and, and it's not yours to take. But <laughs> you know what I mean. It's all right. Well, before I really get into my thoughts, I want to know how do you feel about that whole situation. I think it's an interesting concept. I think it's funny right. the idea of Batman just being like, "Please, I actually I use this money to crime fight. Just <laughs> 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 I, <laughs> I use this yeah. money to make cool gadgets He's to beat up. Like broke now." Oh, oh yeah, I forgot like about that. For a while. Yeah, yeah, last yeah. we talked about it is that he lost his fortune and stuff. I wonder. Yeah, I, yeah, I wish uh, if there's anything, I wish I would have uh, been able to keep keep up with that story because I don't think we've seen Batman in that predicament ever, where he's been Apparently just like cut Batman. Off. Oh god. Oh, where, where he's just been cut off from his resources for the most part. Yeah. But um, I'm I'm sure he has. I mean, like, it was funny because he still had just, caches. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Of shit that you know on the side. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, I, but, um, there's not many superheroes that are, like, for sure poor, except for, like, Spider-Man at times, where he's, like, just been dirt poor. Yeah. Like, from Marvel or DC, I don't think anybody's ever had, like, trouble with money, for the most part. Maybe Iron Fist, maybe, like, some of the more street-level heroes like them. But outside of that, I don't really remember anybody who's just, like, hurting for money ever. Yeah. That's a good point. I'll also go ahead and say, fuck the Waynes. Uh, <laughs> and I don't think that they should have been killed. I don't think anybody should be killed. Well, yeah, mostly everyone. But um, I think, like, you know, e even though the comic book, it's, again, I've said this before, but, like, it's based on real-life circumstances for the most part. You know what I'm saying? They're in cities. They're in the America with the laws and stuff that be. And it's just kind of crazy because, like, when you look at... Gotham is a really special circumstance because when you look at the reasons why Gotham is such a shithole, why there's so much crime, and why the supervillains collect there in mass, etc. You know, I, I think recently, uh, like in the past 10 years, I remember reading the story about... About the Joker, I think it was like at the end of a uh, Snyder's run, and um, it was talking about how like Gotham has like this like curse on it, you know, from back in the like from back in the day, and that the Joker being like this like demon from the past mm -hmm. was just another one of those things. Like he was attracted to Gotham, 
So it's like this is like this mystical aspect to it, to why Gotham is so shitty. But here's the thing, right? I don't remember that being addressed by Batman or any of his cohorts. Like, yo, that is how we're gonna get to the root of solving crime in Gotham by, but you know, and and I feel like Batman should know this. I, I think Batman knows this already. He's one of the smartest people. What? He's the smartest person in DC, right? So, like, if somebody else knows it, I'm sure he does. So yeah. he never tried to do that. I think there was you know something. I think that was like a Court of Owls type of thing because I, the Court of Owls isn't really what it was when Snyder originally like conceptualized them, where there was this like Illuminati like billionaire type group that Batman was fighting against, and they never really followed up with that in a meaningful way. But I felt like that was like the part of it is that there was a secret like elite underground that was controlling like the crime in Gotham. But yeah. I, well, it was really more like on the mystical side, like the, like a demon, something about a demon imp uh, that put a curse on Gotham. Mm. And that's still like, that's why Gotham in particular is such, you know, it's so bad. Uh, which sounds like they could make a cool story out of, but like you know, they haven't. They really haven't dived deep into that yet. Or I mean, I'll do some more research and follow up on that. Yeah, I'm gonna make. I'm gonna write a little note. Yeah, right now. Yeah, I don't. On. Yeah, I don't really know. I haven't really ca- caught up with uh, American comics in quite some time, mostly because yeah. of cost issues. <laughs> They're really expensive. Uh, if you get them in mass, like we used to be. Right. But so. But anyway, I, I just to wrap up my thought on 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 that story, right? I think that that story has a lot of potential because it puts Batman in a really crazy position where it's like, okay, you can be upset at Selena for what she's doing, but the the fact is that crime has been down a lot in the city since she started doing that. Oh yeah, no, I'm not mad at like that. Selena that at actually, all. yeah, you know that. So that has been the case. Now, I, I actually don't think that's sustainable, personally. I think it's only a matter of time before like some type of shit hits the fan because again it is Gotham, and people don't always do things just for economic power. They do things because they're comic book evil. <laughs> you know what I mean? They might just want to fuck it up just because. Yeah. But um, uh, uh wrapping up my thoughts. Shit, I forgot what I was going with that. <sighs> No, nah, oh, okay. So as far as as far as Bruce is concerned, so he may be upset about how she's going about it, but her, she's had results, and frankly, better results than him, although albeit like a small sample size, right? But if he's gonna stop her, my thing is, what is, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna stop her just to return to the status quo, which doesn't really help anything, but really serve the same powers that be, right? Or are you gonna? Uh, is he going to try to work with Selena to make uh, somehow to improve, you know, on on the situation? Yeah, this, this, this is an integral story for Batman, you know, as far as his character. I agree. I think that book. it's worth keeping track of, if anything. Yeah, Blurred. Uh, you know about Blurred, right? On YouTube. Um. Oh, uh, he's a bl- black. He's a black guy to be covering. Uh, he uploads a lot too. He's been holding it down for me with the X Men comics, mm. and uh, you know he'll do DC every now and then too. Yeah. No, yeah, I haven't heard. I, I might actually check him out. Just was, it'll be a good way to like keep up with shit. To be honest, um, I like to get back to a point where I'm reading and supporting like American comics again. But um, I guess if I do, I have to be really se- selective about what we do here because just because. When we were like buying every X Men book, it was actually pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they would be putting out like fucking seven books a week. It was uh pretty wild. Yeah, that that was a marathon. Yeah, I'm trying to save up for a new computer at this point. So, yeah, if we ever do get into certain comics, Brian's gonna have to read all of them with us too. There's no way around it. Yeah, no ifs, ands, or buts. We're all on the same playing field at this point. When it comes to those, but all right, yeah. I guess we should start the show proper at this point. Um, I hope you guys like yeah. this. Stuff. Oh, also, um, Doomsday is in hell, in DC hell, as he belongs. <laughs> as yeah, he's he, trying to get out though, as he de- as he fucking deserves. 
Um, all right. Well, I hope you guys like this episode of uh, flashback episodes. I got to re- rename all the episodes to flashback episodes. I do like that, that title. So it's kind of grown on me. But yeah, we're here. Like pre-show chat show, but it's OK. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep it. Who, who knows? Who knows what I'll do? Uh, but yeah, till then, I guess, uh, we'll see you guys in New Jump City. We're doing an early episode today, so, uh, we might, we're going to release New Jump City tonight, which is Sunday night. We're recording the same day the chapters come out and, um, I'll put it out, I'll put out this show Monday. Maybe, maybe I'll put it out Tuesday. I don't know. Just to stretch it out a bit. But anyway, uh, send us your questions if you guys are avid listeners of the show and we'll answer them on here and all that stuff, but. Yeah, great talking to you. We'll see you guys in New Jump City. Peace out.